Hello and welcome to another clean and simple card making video. This is a really simple clean and simple card, quick and easy too. For this card I decided to use up another paper scrap. This is a piece of hammered textured white cardstock. I popped it on my grip mat and then painted on some pigment powder paints. These paints I made in my Pigment Powders 101 series, which I will link in the video description below. And for today's card, I'm just going to use the teal paint, which I reactivated by squirting in some water, and some copper paint, which I also reactivated by squirting in some water. These paint on really nicely and thickly and give a lovely, shimmery, shiny, bold finish. So I painted half my card in teal and half my card in copper and then I dried it with my hair dryer and then cut my piece of card into smaller pieces so that I could die cut from it. I did stick some of the teal card down to some double sided adhesive craft foam. It's quite thin but it does give a nice bit of dimension. From the teal card I cut some small square stitched frames and from the copper paper I cut some slightly larger stitched square pieces and then I stuck the dimensional teal frames on top of the flat copper squares. I did make six of each of these little arrangements but I only ended up using four on my card. So I've got two to use on another project. Initially, my card blank started off as four by six inches because I was thinking of lining up three of the squares down the left-hand side, but then I thought to myself, I've done a lot of lining things up down the left-hand side recently. I'm gonna do something different. So I took four of the squares and arranged them into a square. I didn't just want to stick them straight on the card though, so I die cut out a square that would accommodate all four and give them a little border in between and around the outside. And then I just used my matte gel medium glue to stick my squares down, trying to get them lined up nicely. I then stuck this whole square onto the front of my four by six card panel using some tape runner. But when I stuck it on, I just didn't like the square on the rectangle. It didn't work proportionally for me. So I put that thought to one side for a minute and decided to add a sentiment. I thought I could maybe stamp something on a long strip and stick it over some of the squares or stamp underneath the squares or stamp between the squares. But in the end, I decided to die cut out some white letters that spell out the word love and put one in each square. So I took some smooth white cardstock, stuck it on a bit of the self-adhesive craft foam, die cut out the letters, and then I stuck them in the center of each square. And I really like the way it turned out. It just is a very pleasing, regular repeating arrangement. I wanted to add a bit of gloss to my white letters, so I added some glossy accents on the top of each one, and then I had to set it aside to dry because at this point I decided that I definitely didn't like the rectangular card. I wanted to make a square card, and I didn't want to try chopping my card down with the wet glossy accents on. So I left the glossy accents to dry, walked away, and came back a little later, and chopped my card blank down, so that all I had was a little bit of extra border around the big square, the big white square that's already there. And then I beveled the edges with my embossing tool to make it look as if it had been die cut and added it to the front of a five by five inch smooth white cardstock card blank. And I was much happier with the square on the square card. So it's all squares. It didn't make sense to me to have a rectangle. So really, if you don't like what you've got, you can most of the time adapt it into something that you do like. And that's this card finished. I do hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you a really quick and easy 
idea to do with things that you might already have in your stash. You don't need the luscious powder paints, you can use any paints you like, you could use pattern paper, you could use some DIY backgrounds that you've got sitting around your craft room. Right, that's it. Thanks for watching and I will see you very soon. Bye for now.